It's time for Life Engineering, processes that combine science, wisdom, and spirituality to build a life of alignment. Joining Dr. Pat is your host, Gabriella Embon, bringing you bi-weekly wisdom nuggets, your step-by-step guidance to build a life of no regrets. Stay tuned as they uncover powerful processes for you to realize your true potential. Are you ready for some magic wisdom? Life Engineering starts now. Everybody, I want to welcome you to a great, great episode, uh, Life Engineering with Gabriella. Before we go there, I want to make sure all of you know how you can get a hold of Gabriella, how you can find out more about her. So first of all, you go to coachingacademy.net, coachingacademy.net. And if you go there, you're going to find a lot of information throughout the show. We'll also tell you how to find out and connect with Gabriella directly. Today's show that I get to co-host with the most incredible Gabrielle Ambon is do what what do we do when we get the obstacles in our lives to show up? How do we dissolve them? Gabriella, you're gonna take us through that, right? Absolutely. So excited for this show. We actually did a class on that uh, last week uh, within our community. And it was very, very impactful. And I decided that why don't we share this with everybody? So uh, this is what exactly this is what this is all about obstacles, because you've probably been there. I mean, tell me if this resonates with you, because I know I've been there when you've been working on yourself because you are trying to manifest something and it's not going well. So you go, okay, well, I need to work on my beliefs, right? And then you work on yourself and it still doesn't manifest and you're still, you're getting more obstacles. So you go, okay, now I have more obstacles. So I clearly need to work on myself more. And, and then you go, I don't get it. Right. I've done so much work. Why is it still not working for me? Why do I feel so stuck? Um, so we're going to talk a lot about that, but we're also going to talk about what happens when you are excited to share success in your life in one aspect of your life things are going well you're super super excited to share this with your loved ones and the moment you do I don't know if that happened to you the moment you talk about what's going great in your life the next thing you know it goes wrong something goes wrong (laughs) something breaks and you go I can't believe it I was just (laughs) talking about how amazing this is going and now something breaks what did I do did I is that the evil eye? Did I jinx it? What is it? Have you been there? Five times this week alone. <laughs> it makes you go, I'm never going to talk about what's going well in my life, right? <laughs> you know, I'm glad you you brought that up. I really am. You know, you see my back wall. Okay, you know what it's like. Okay, you see my back wall, a uh, beautiful painting by my natu- my acupuncturist mom, beautiful, beautiful Chinese painting, but all the other glasswork. So I do this glasswork, and I'm so excited about it. It's, it, it. Obviously, it's abstract. You can tell, right? So I do this. So what do you do? I show people. So what happens? So some people say a few things, but the other people don't say anything. And so this is the part about this that we're going to talk about today. Even though you share something with people that you're super excited, who knows what's going on in their mind, but something gets dissipated, diluted, and then a challenge comes up. But what's the story that we tell ourselves about the challenge? Because is it really true, Gabrielle? Not really. What we tell ourselves is I shouldn't share. People are jealous. This is I attracted the evil eye. That happened to me. I was sharing um, with a friend an amazing evening that I had with my kids. And, you know, my kids are teenagers and young adults, and we had this beautiful supper, and then we end up spending three hours playing charades as a family and having a blast. And I think I'm thinking to myself, I don't know why parents think that it's difficult to connect with teenagers. Teenagers don't want to spend time with you. And I am so proud of the family that we have and, and the mother that I am, and I'm proud of my children. And I share this beautiful evening with my friend. And the next thing, the next day I have a, a huge fight with my daughter. <laughs> so, but then I started looking back that this has happened a lot, that sometimes we are up. And when you share, when you're up, the next thing you know, you're down. So it made me wonder, why is that? And, and you know, when you when you share this with people, they will tell you, 
your grandma will tell you, don't tell people when you're happy. People are not happy when you're happy, right? They, they become jealous. They're going to send you negative energy, the evil eye, whatever your culture believes in. <laughs> so you walk around with an eye, right, for protection. But that's one thing. The other thing is, and, and, and it's the same answer for both, is that, like I said, you are doing everything right. You keep working on yourself. You're taking responsibility in order to manifest a goal. And it seems that the more you work on yourself, the more you have reasons to continue working on yourself because obstacles come up and now you need to work on these obstacles. And you go, okay, I need to clear another layer of beliefs and another layer of beliefs. Why is that? So this is what this podcast, this episode is all about, is how do we dissolve these obstacles from or prevent them from actually happening? And why is it that every time we are so happy about something and we go and share it. The next thing you know, something goes wrong, something breaks. Uh, so I hope everybody's excited to answer that question because I I was asking myself, why is that? Right? So the answer to that is actually quite simple. <laughs> to both questions, the answer is, well, we have the love balance to blame. <laughs> No, not to blame, but we're going to talk about the love balance and the power of unattachment. Okay, but let's just talk about this for a minute, because you're going to walk through this. We are so quick to come up with a story that is so negative, right? I mean, you just touched on a few and I'm laughing inside. I just I just got a message from somebody that's listening to the show and they just messaged me and said, she's talking about your grandma. She's talking about your like grandma from the old country that, that, that I, but look, it's not this at all, is it? No, it's not at all. It's actually much more simple. And once you understand it, you, you start realizing what's going on and how to work with that. So it's about simplifying and drama is never the answer. Let's be very clear. So uh, every time we feel there is a drama, we are not in the right direction, right? So the answer to those questions we were asking, why does it happen, requires us to understand how the love balance actually works. Basically, whenever we place too much importance on something, whether it's external, like a relationship with my children or a goal that I want to uh, attract or a result that I'm running after, right? whether it's external or internal. In other words, we put too much importance on ourselves, right? Every time we do so, we are creating an imbalance. We are creating an imbalance between this particular thing that I am placing so much importance, uh, intention, uh, intensity, and energy and the other things in our lives. And if I'm putting too much importance on me thinking, well, this beautiful relationship with my children is because I am a good mother. It's I've done the work, I, I, I. I am elevating myself, I'm putting myself on a pedestal. So I'm also putting a lot of importance on me compared to other people. So what happens when we do that, again, whether it's internally by bragging or seeing ourselves as the root for all the goodness or seeing ourselves as the root for all the not so goodness, right? or it's equal, right? right. Or we put importance on other people. Nature, okay, will seek to balance that. And the way that the law of balance works is, okay, let's balance this. There is an imbalance here by going to the lowest energetic state, by bringing whatever is on a pedestal down. And we will correct this imbalance using the path of least resistance. And the path of least resistance is by creating obstacles. So we distance, right? What I'm placing so much importance on. And we realize once it's gone, we realize that it wasn't that important. Yeah. And we start focusing on other aspects of our lives. And now we have a balance. So all these imbalance or excess potential on one aspect or one person in my life 
in other words, cre is bringing obstacles into my life because that's how the law of balance is trying to bring that excess potential to zero potential, which is the lowest energetic state nature will always gravitate towards. Yeah. And so it's the law of contrast, too. I mean, if you watch a sport, like I like to watch basketball, I'm really stunned by them because I'm watching their lack of emotion when they play. Okay, what am I trying to say? So in my sport, I, I try to do the same thing, just the, just the face, you know, but sometimes you get really incited on the inside when you do something really good. And you, but but it, if you ever watch basketball, you ever notice it's not like other sports. When they shoot a hoop or they do something, they just run to the other, they're just done. They're done. I'm done with the hoop. Then they're like, I'm a happy dance hoop person. They don't yeah. do that. They run to the other side. It's such balance in and like And like soccer. Right, that they take the time to to celebrate. Yeah, right, right exactly, right. That's right. true. And listen, we do this with all aspects of our lives. We do it with our children. We see a lot that couples, once they have children, one in particular, usually the mother will place now the children on a pedestal, and then we get we get an imbalance between the children and this the relationship with the spouse. We do that if we want to close a new client or we want to close a sales call right we get obsessed i have to i have to have this client i have to close this sales call uh we do that if we want to heal if somebody is ill and obviously they want to heal they will be obsessed with their healing to get well um and and what we're not realizing we're not saying that you don't want to heal or get a new client but what we don't realize is that when we put so much attachment importance we're actually sabotaging ourselves and I was working with that with my daughter because she had applied for law school in different universities and she was waiting for the answer from the university she actually wants to really go to and you know she had her interview and now she was obsessing over it right she was driving herself and us crazy because she was did I say the right word? What if it doesn't happen? What if I don't get in? But she has the other ones, the other opportunities open for her too. She got into the other universities. So I kept telling her, I explained how the love balance works. And I said, I know this is where you want to go. And it's great. You did your best. Now you need to let it go. If you get attached to that, if you put so, if you put that particular school on a pedestal, you're going to create obstacles. So you now need to completely yeah. detach from the result. It's not easy when something is very important to us. She We're should talk about that. She should call me. How's your daughter call me? Okay, I've walked her through this really well. Rejected from 35 well, schools. Just right out of the gate, rejected. However, they weren't my first choice. I mean, you're so right about this attachment, but don't we do it all the time, right? And do, we, so let me ask you a question as you move forward with this story. By doing this, are we inviting more of that? Do, do you know what we're I mean? We're inviting obstacles, you? right? Without knowing, of course, we're inviting obstacles. And if, you're, if you go, okay, I've done everything, it's probably my belief. So now you'll work on yourself to attain this goal and it's not working. So you say, okay, I have to clear more beliefs. Now we are inviting obstacles and then you work, you go, okay, I need to work more to remove these obstacles. And then you get stuck in this loop of delaying your manifestation because all you're doing by focusing so much energy into that, this strong attachment is actually you are generating obstacles. You don't realize that the law of balance is working to balance all this while you are keep getting out of balance. So it's a vicious circle, actually. And that's why the more you work on yourself in this particular case, um, the more you feel stuck. Yeah. Now, you said you taught this course at the Academy. I want to just let everybody know when you said that very quickly, that the Academy, the Coaching Academy, is an organization where people can come to get certified and become coaches in the web. And this is something that you all created. So it's kind of unusual when you say I taught this because you're always teaching, Gabriella. I have met so many people in 20 years, but I've never met anybody like you that is so absolutely passionate about learning and helping people learn and enhance their skills. And so I need to commend you for that. Because we Thank don't you. hear that often enough. A lot of times things get created. And yet you and I might get criticized for this because people say, Pat, the more you do, 
wow, the more others are going to expect of you. See, I don't call it, I don't see that as an obstacle, but you're teaching this. So you know Yeah, because we offer important. to our graduates twice a month continuous education. So we did this class as part of the continuous education. This past wow. last week, a week ago. Wow. So, you know, I think we're familiar with how important it is to not be attached to your goals. I think that anybody in personal development knows that. That's no news. But when you understand why, right, how the love balance works, it has a completely different meaning. And you actually get to grasp, yeah, actually, the more I attach, because you want to be clear about what you want, you want to go after your goal, but you don't want to, you want to take the, the journey without attachment, not detachment. You don't want to be detached. Detached means you don't care. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about unattachment, not detachment. And when you detach and reduce the importance first, right, you might actually then um, dissolve the obstacles. And if they don't get dissolved, that's fine. Then work on them. But before you work on the obstacles, if you want to avoid creating more obstacles, you need to first detach and reduce the importance. Yeah. Because nature will always solve problems through the path of least resistance, which will end up being the path of most resistance for you. <laughs> Big, I know it's... You, I, you know I, that I, I channeled that sentence at 2 a.m. last week. But... It's very good. Say it again, because Linda's listening to the show and saying, did she talk to you about the week you, you just had? I said, well, she probably intuitively did it. But let's mention that one more time, please. I want people to get what you just said. It is critical to manifesting everything. That's right. Nature has a way of solving problems through the path of least resistance which ends up being the path of most resistance for us due to the obstacles that get created, as well as our own resistance to lower the importance and let go and surrender. So we are actually sabotaging ourselves. I always tell clients, obstacles are not a sign that you need to give up or that you are not meant to have that. We, we, I think we mentioned that last episode. They are a sign that you need to let go detach or remove the attachment and surrender yeah the best example i've seen recently is caesar milan caesar milan is known as the dog whisperer but he's so much more and he now he he has moved away from teaching dogs and now he's teaching humans and what he teaches them is called calm surrender that is what we're talking about and if you watch him do it for a raging dog and you watch the energy, it's exactly the physical manifestation of what you and I are talking about. It's that energy that we create when we obsess and obsession loves to be obsessed. Yes. Obsession always will invite obstacles. You said it very well. <laughs> and look, it's not easy, right? Because no. you, you go, okay, how am I supposed to lower importance when my life depends on that? Sometimes people say, I'm, I'm sick. How am I supposed to lower importance when I might not be here next year, right? Yeah. It's not, it, we're not, of course, it's, um, we're not taking the, 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 the challenge. We're not talking about, oh, you just do it. It's easy. No, it's I not. I went through this though, but, uh, but let's just talk about it in real terms for people. Look, this could be like with your daughter, a conversation, or it could be what I just went through with a company that I've hired to take care of my corporation for getting to file one document. And that one document they didn't file caused a chain effect and a ripple effect. Now, I could have obsessed and can, and it was, a, it was a such, it was the most difficult situation for me that I've come across in a long time because other people depended on us doing certain things for them. And we couldn't do it because one paper didn't get filed. So what could I do? I could obsess. I could be like crazy. Oh, my God, they didn't file the paper. If they don't only file the paper, blah, 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 blah. And I didn't know it was the paper till two days ago, right? But there was something not right. And it showed up strangely and positively. But finally, Linda and I said, you know, we're going to have tough conversations with our staff. However, 
I'm not obsessing over this. I'm going to make the phone call, call the right people, and it's going to get fixed. But I don't know about you. I just had to turn that over to the God of my understanding because there was nothing else I could do, Gabriella. That's right. You surrender. It's what you didn't give up. You surrender. And that's the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, it's much easier to do so when you believe in higher power. There's no question about that. And, and when you say, I don't know what else to do, that's when you say, well, I would love for this to get resolved. I would love for this to happen. But if not, that's okay too. And I like that sentence. Yeah. I love if that. not, that's okay too. Probably it's for the better. Exactly. Exactly. So I want to ask you this question. Let's go through uh, what you've learned, uh, how to immerse ourselves in the process in the last minutes we have left, because what you're talking about is so critical. We should do like a workshop for entrepreneurs on this. It is such a problem for women entrepreneurs. It's why I started my nonprofit. But take us through the process, because if we could learn this, we sleep better at night. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> it lowers the, the level of anxiety and worry tremendously. So let's talk about how to lower the importance. OK, so you want to first uh, we'll talk about different ways. The one is to immerse yourself in the process, regardless of the results. Fall in love with the game, not the winning. Play to have fun, not to win. Um, and think about what would make the pursuit fun. Like we said, you can say, I would love for this to happen, but if not, that's okay too. So that's one way. The other is to create alternatives. Abundance always helps. Create alternatives. It's if you have one sales call a day, you're going to be obsessed with signing that client. And you might, you might do whatever it takes, might not be the right client, but you will still sign that client because you, you have one. But if you have multiple sales calls, you will say, okay, did one, that one didn't go. You'll be less, you, you won't put that client on a pedestal. So alternatives and focusing on other areas of our lives, creating more opportunities always helps to create that balance. Um, it's like having one friend or having a few friends. If you have one friend and that friend doesn't talk to you, you'll obsess over it, right? Um, the other thing you want to do is be grateful for the obstacles <laughs> and the balance that gets attained through that obstacles. I always say this could be worse. If that's the obstacle that is balancing my situation, if this is how the love balance is working with me, I'm, I'm grateful. You, you are being redirected. And it's better that it's now when the balance is smaller than later when you have created a huge gap. In other words, better to get a ticket than go to jail. <laughs> so when a tribulation, when something I know it happened for me to balance, like having that argument with my daughter, okay, if that's how you want to balance me, I get it. I learn it better that way and not something worse. Um, and also ask yourself these obstacles. You know, these obstacles are created by the love balance, but Perhaps they're a blessing in disguise. Probably they're a blessing in disguise. They are redirecting you. They're showing you you were not going in the right direction. So take the time to understand what's the opportunity that could be born from this. What's the blessing in disguise here? Mm -hmm. And my favorite strategy, and I did that with my daughter when we were talking about the school. By the way, she got admitted to the university she wanted. <laughs> Interesting so did enough. I, by the way. So did I. <laughs> but when we, when I was helping her not to obsess over the interview and if she did well, she get in, she, she won. I said to her, listen, you have University A and University B. You got into B, you won A. But if I told you that in A, there's going to be a professor who won't resonate with you and will block your professional development and has a lot of contacts and won't be very beneficial for you. And in University B, there's going to be a professor who absolutely adores you and opens the doors for you. Which one would you go to? And she said, oh, of course, this one. I said, well, then realize that we don't know. You want something, you're getting attached, but that is limiting you because you don't know. I remember when I tried to get into, 
before I got into chemical engineering and tried to get into another program, pharmacology, and I didn't get in and I reapply and, I, you know, I appeal again and I didn't get in. Had I known that if I went into that university, I will probably end up divorced today and not go in there. Somebody would tell, well, you don't go to, into that program. You take this path and you end up meeting the love of your life and being married, happily married with three kids. I would say, forget about pharmacology and let me take that path, right? But we don't know that. So if we learn to think that way, we will realize that we are very small and we need to humble ourselves and realize we don't know there is a higher power that is redirecting and guiding us. Yeah. And if we see it that way, we won't get attached to it has to be this one. Yeah. Look, I am so glad you brought this up because the key to removing and dissolving all obstacles is exactly to what you said. Uh, and, you know, look, you and I have both had that same experience. I was surprised. I thought I was supposed to go to a doctoral program at Columbia. I got my master's from there, but I sent the application to the wrong department. Uh, or did I really? No. But you see, what I love about your saying, and I want to ask you to really, you know, for your closing message on this, we're not saying not to take action. I want to be very clear here. No. Because this one piece of paper that didn't get filed that everybody even overlooked, including my attorney general, everybody missed didn't mean that i just uh no you gotta know the steps you're taking and if people go back and listen to the one you did on intuition and action they would get it but once you do that then you gotta let it go back. you do your best take a step back let go don't get attached to the result i like scott young's um quote he says while achieving goals is overrating striving towards them is underrated overrated is striving towards them is underrated so you want to strive towards your goals but let go of the result because it's not up to you right so i also like to tell my clients and and the coaches next time you start a new path towards a goal before you do that before you study whether it's a sales call that that's your next goal or a long term goal next time you start something Close your eyes, imagine failing first. Realize it's not the end of the world. Visualize what's being born instead. What's the blessing in disguise? What's the opportunity that could be born? And then go about it. You're going to be deta you're going to be unattached from the result and that's going to benefit you greatly. You also will have more clarity of mind. And sleep better yeah. at night. Gabriella, thank you so much for today's show. So, so important. For those of you out there, please talk to Gabriella. Please think about what your life would be like if you just let go. Gabriella, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Pat. And if I just say one more word, you know what I love about this? We're working with the law of balance. It's pure engineering. It totally is. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take a short break, everybody. Coachingacademy.net. Please check it out. We'll be right back. You have been listening to Life Engineering, processes that combine science, wisdom, and spirituality to create a life of alignment on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Join host Gabriella Embon and Dr. Pat every first and third Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific for bi-weekly wisdom nuggets on how to create your perfect synergy between your mind, body, and spirit in order to realize your true potential. For more information, visit Gabriella at CoachingAcademy.net.